Hi everyone. Hopefully you can see us. This is Ashley and Harvest. We are from the Nations team. We just wanted to do a quick hello before uh, Tamara jumps in and gets us all some knowledge. Uh, so I am the Director of Strategic Partnerships for Nations. And I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Nations Photo Lab. Uh, if there's anything you need along the way, there will be some Q&A at the end. So just shoot us over your questions and then Tamara will be addressing those. And of course, if there's anything you need from Harvest and I, um, you can find us on our Google Plus page or Facebook. All right, guys, enjoy. Okay, everybody. Woo! We are getting started for the first time. This is actually pretty exciting. Um, if you are not familiar with me or my work, we're going to show a brief, I think about a four minute slideshow, um, a, excuse me, a video, an animated video um, showcasing some fun work. Uh, if you have speakers and brightness, I would suggest, by the way, for the entirety of this webinar, um, turn up your speakers and turn up your brightness and try to get yourself at a place where you can listen well and um, go ahead and enjoy this.
Thanks, guys. Um, Ready had a little bit of feedback that some of you saw that really well, and some of you had some choppy music. So I guess it depends on your connection and what you're seeing. But I am delivering this webinar from Nations Photo Lab in Baltimore. We're in this beautiful conference room, and I'm actually on a PC, which feels so crazy to me. I feel like I'm just I, I'm in a car I've never driven before, and I don't quite know what to do. <laughs> but um, Hopefully you guys can see everything okay. We would love some feedback from you, real-time feedback. If you want to just um, chime in on Twitter, um, at TamaraLackey.com, I can follow along and get any feedback from you guys about things that you would like um, to comment on or questions you have as we go through this. That'd be really helpful. You can also jump on the Nations Photo Lab page on Google+ um, and leave comments, and we're, we'll go ahead and respond to those as we're going. But Basically, what we're going to do is this whole program is called Deconstructing Images. And we're going to step through image after image and talk about um, what went into creating the image. And that's pretty specifically in terms of um, how the image was made, um, not just in terms of how it was put together and how the interaction was achieved, but also in terms of lighting and metering and very specific technical set settings and lens equipment. If you are somebody who is interested in an image from the perspective of the technicals, like how was this made exactly, um, you're going to love this webinar because that is what it's all about. Um, in addition, we're going to talk about printing your work. I'm a huge fan of printing work and the things you want to think about as you're looking through the images in terms of, you know what, I'm just about to send this to print. What do I need to think about? Um, okay, so we're going to start out with this first image. Um, that I photographed uh, earlier this year, actually. And um, this image, I, I love this image. I think it's charming. It's as charming as this little girl for a lot of reasons. It was shot in my studio in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. A really simple lighting setup. One main softbox in a bit to the right. A hair light behind her to the left, skimming across the backdrop and, and catching that hair. That, that rim light, that uh, backlight is what enabled us to get that hair. Um, and a reflector acting as a fill light right underneath her to the right, which bounced up some fill back not only from the main, but also ensured that we, get, we got those catch lights. When I photograph children in the studio, my focus is pretty strongly on a broadly lit backdrop. So I use constant lights or continuous lighting. Um, I love that what you see is what you get in terms of when you set them up. Um, I know that whatever I set up, uh, in terms of the lighting and the dimensions and the way it models my subject is what I'll be seeing in the finished photograph. So I do love constant lighting from that perspective. I tend to light a, li a bit flatter than what I would prefer my end game shot to look like because I know that I'm going to go into Photoshop and do tweaks to pop up contrast, sharpen files, any little things I want to do. So I tend to light more broadly and it's tiny bit flat so that I can go into post and do that. Um, so uh, in terms of this, this shot very specifically, this was shot with the Nikon D4, the 85-1.4 lens. Um, it was at 1 500th of a second, a 3.5 aperture, an ISO of 1000, and um, it was in a, the matrix or evaluative metering is what I chose for this. Uh, because everything was pretty even in terms of what I was shooting against. There wasn't any sort of you know, strong backlight. She certainly wasn't centered uh, in the image. And it was composed in a way that, yes, she's in the bottom right thirds of the frame, but we also have that wonderful diagonal going up. What I think about before I print this image is that uh, there's a concern of banding anytime you're shooting against an even, even backdrop that's darker or very, very bright. So very dark and very bright, you tend to have an issue that there's going to be concerns about banding when you print. And, um, and that's, that's in terms of what is on the image file, what, what could be the risk. And so what I do, especially if I'm going to be printing a larger print or metallic print that really is going to show everything, um, I tend to then comb through the image and really look up and down and, and make sure that everything is even from that perspective. If I zoom in and I see that there's going to be um, a possibility of banding, then I'll even it out in Photoshop by doing simple painting. So opacity and flow at something like 30% um, and sampling very frequently and just evening it out so I don't have an issue with banding after the print 
um, is done. Interestingly enough, as I said, I'm at Nations Photo Lab and I spent the entire day touring the facility um, in great detail. Like I've seen every step. I've um, had a chance to talk to everybody and, and what they do and why they do it. And, um, there is a lot of quality control in place and, and that was interesting to me. I didn't realize how much of this was done by hand. I really didn't. I kind of thought you send it in and it comes back done. But so much of this is uh, looked at and every step is mounted and hand stretched canvas and you know, final quality control at the end. And so luckily a, a print like this, if I end up having banding, um, I would be contacted. Uh, before something was made, I, I would be made aware of that as opposed to them just printing it as a 20 by 30 and sending it to me with all kinds of problems. So that's actually quite cool from a business perspective to know that that's kind of there for you. But those, those are the things I would think about when I'm looking at this image. So I know that there is um, a lot of people, there are a lot of people tuning in. Um, I mentioned right when we got started that if you have comments or feedback or questions, I would love to hear from you. So um, webinars are tough for me because I feel like I'm literally talking to a screen. That's because I'm literally talking to a screen. Um, and I don't get to see your feedback and I don't get to see your faces and I don't get to see you raise your hand and say, yes, that's what I wanted you to cover. So definitely um, send any sort of notes through on either Twitter or on the Nation's Photo thing. <laughs> I'm on Ashley's. Um, I'm going to shut that down. I'm getting, I'm, I might get uh, pop-ups of her email as we go along. So if there's anything like really, you know, crazy, I'll make sure I delete it as fast as possible. Um, so anyway, if you have notes, if you have comments, if this feedback is what you were looking for, things like that, just let us know either at mention on Twitter for Tamara Lackey or right directly on the Google Plus page um, for Nations Photo Lab. That would be wonderful. All right. This is so... Forgive me as I fumble a little bit with a PC. Okay, next we have, and I think this goes large screen, doesn't it? Yes. Um, next we have this little boy who is just so ready for his GQ cover anytime now. Oh, it turns into just a live show. No, you don't. Um, I was speaking at a conference, the What If Conference, actually in um, the Dominican Republic. Okay, apparently PCs want to make it into movies when you do that or stop that. Um, the, uh, at the Dominican Republic and um, I was actually speaking on the topic, topic of awareness, of practical self-awareness or understanding that you are not your thoughts um, and how, what an impact that can have um, on your art and, uh, and how you conduct your business. But on the last day of the What If conference, we visited this nearby school and this little boy stepped up to introduce himself in carefully practiced English. And I learned that he was one of the top students in the school. And this look he's giving to me, this is how he is interacting. Focused, interested, there, so there. Um, so as a photographer, as a portrait photographer, my goal then is to just keep him there. I don't have to bring him there. He's already there. My goal is to keep him there and engage him in an active, intelligent, interactive manner. If I started treating him like a baby boy, you know, or say, hey, aren't you so cute? I would not have achieved the same intensity of expression. So I shot this with the D800 and the 105-28 lens, the Nikon D800 and the 105-28 lens. Um, and they deliver, that combination delivers some incredibly sharp files. So we were outdoors just off of the light, um, which you can see some of that light flashing across his arm there. And we're shooting just above a gray concrete sidewalk, which is one of my favorite places to shoot. Um, children because you have this wonderful natural reflector um, which is fabulous and about the only thing that reflects you know more than a light gray concrete especially when a child's closer to the ground is you know water you know or light beach sand or something like that but this image um, what I think about when I am printing it is first and foremost that the highlights are kept that um, I don't have any issues with specular highlights that if I have a patch of sunlight going across his arm for instance um, I don't have anywhere where I've lost detail and I've lost uh, the color in the image. That's one of the first things I'm going to think about. And um, again, I'm looking at this image for the first time ever on a PC screen and um, it's, to me it looks so different than how, I look, how it looks on a Mac. I don't know, we were trying to figure this out earlier, if I'm, if I'm live casting this on screen share, um, from a Google Hangout, from a PC, do you see exactly what the color of this image looks like on this screen? Or, or is it the original integrity of the file that you see on your screen? It's like this crazy in-a-box riddle. I actually don't know the answer. Maybe one of you guys do. But um, 
on the on this image um, on my file, it's um, a very uh, bright white background, and it and it blends in perfectly. When I'm looking on this screen, there's a there's a hint of a different tone to it. I'm going to speak to these images how I know they're processed and how I know they they've been printed. Um, but of course, one of the things I'm going to really think about is that the specular highlights are held, um, and that I have a similar casting um, in the entire background. That I don't have one side that's more one tone and another side that's another tone, which is not difficult to do, especially when you're shooting with studio lights in a studio. It's not difficult to have one side of your background um, have a tint to it and the other one doesn't, and it looks very odd in large print. So that's what I'm going to be thinking about when I look at this print. Um, the details in terms of the metadata on this image, it was shot at ISO 100 at 116, 1 160th of a second, a 3.5 aperture, and because of where he's focused in the frame, it was a center-weighted uh, center weighted metering option. Um, so, you know, what makes an image, um, what makes a photograph kind of stand out? Often it's like these quirky little things, this beautiful girl, and she's got this adorable smile, and I love the hands, but the tats, the tattoos are where it's at. That's what really makes it. Um, so when I look at this, oh, it's going on one. It's a screen share. No, we don't get those annoying. I have no idea. Go ahead, go ahead. You do it. We'll see if we're still with you. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just want to get rid of the annoying pop-ups for you. Okay, I was like, do you know you're closing on the windows? And you should have closed this no, one. No All right. Sorry. I swear this is like a different language, the PC world. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, I love the tattoos. And often that's really true in portrait photography. You see it everywhere. In editorial, the emphasis is on juxtaposition. A sweet little girl with tattoos. Like, granted, they're cute tattoos. Um, I actually would have liked this image a little bit more if they'd been like hardcore biker tattoos. I'm not sure our mom would have been so into that. Um, this was shot with the Nikon D4, the 85-1.4 lens, um, the ISO 400. It was shot at 1 400th of a second at an f1.8. And this was matrix or evaluative metering in this image. So um, I see we have um, something come in. I have a question. So do you ever have the lab color correct? or do you do it? Um, I spend a lot of time uh, doing detailed color toning work on my images. I really, really care about it. Um, that being said, I sat with Tom, the um, head of uh, printing lab today, and I watched him go into such great detail to make sure that the prints match exactly and everything was done perfectly. He gets the image file, and he wants to make sure it comes out a certain way, and I thought he did such a fabulous job. So I've done all my own color work to date, but I might be shifting that now because it's so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really spend a lot of time with the color correction. I care a great deal about it. That's partly why this is a little difficult for me to look at my images on the screen. Um, I, obviously, my images are set and they're calibrated to my screen, and, they, and the prints I get back are what I see on my screen, um, and it's consistent across. And I'm looking at the image here, and I'm like, that's not what it looks like. And I'm very sensitive to that. It looks really different. Uh, so I'm still interested in the answer of whether or not it looks different to you guys. So uh, feel free to keep asking questions, and I'm, I'll happily answer them as we go. Um, so the next one is, um, you know, so, this image, I love this. this so many images are, are taken straight on. So when you see a profile, it can stop you for a minute. You know, in a squared profile, which is this is more in the nature of, is even stranger, uh, which, again, anytime you can get somebody to stop and look at your image and take a double take, that's a really good thing. If you are interested in marketing your work and, and developing promo cards or, or showing your work at auctions, um, think long and hard about what image you show because the image you show doesn't necessarily have to be the best image you ever shot, but you want it to be an image that people stop and think about again. And, and so this image was shot in profile, and I, I love the fact that this is going to show some variety to a collection of images. Keep this image in mind as we go along, and you'll see what I mean in a second. But um, the settings for this image, this was shot with a D800, the 105-28 lens, that's a macro lens, um, shot at um, ISO 200, 1 250th of a second, and f-stop of 3.5 with the center-weighted metering in camera. So next, um, sometimes you get really lucky and you've got a preteen who matches like her cheeks to her lips to her sweater and everything comes together and you had nothing to do with it. 
Um, in those cases, a lot of times when I find something really striking in the frame, I, I, I cut out the extraneous parts, which is anything around her. It doesn't really matter as much. I like that this image feels cohesive and sweet, but has just the right amount of attitude. Sometimes you get subjects of any age, but particularly teenagers and um, more and more preteens, who are just too cool to be doing this, and they make sure to let you know. So when it comes to highly resistant subjects, um, they come with parents who want the images taken. So I made a point of letting them know that I acknowledge that they don't want to be there, um, and I work with them from that framework. So, um, you know, the attitude. I love that there's a hint of the attitude. I think that makes the image. If this were too sweet, it wouldn't be as striking. If it's too much attitude, it, it, it kind of kills the image. So a little bit of that is actually makes for a great shot. Um, this was shot with the D4, the 2470 28 lens, um, ISO 1000, 1 1 60th of a second, and a 4 5 aperture matrix. What I'm going to think about matrix metering or evaluative metering, what I'm going to think about before I print this image is a couple of things. One, is it sharp or I want it to be sharp, and is it soft or I want it to be soft? Um, when you do close ups and you're shooting really close to the subject, it's not difficult to get you know, one eye in focus and the other one a little soft, or one side of the cheek is really sharp and it falls off somewhere on the side, and you don't really notice until it's printed. Um, so those are things that I'm going to pay attention to before I print. Um, haha, <laughs> love this guy. Uh, so we're shooting downtown, and I see this bold, bright yellow color. This is just a random door in the middle of nowhere, and it stands out to me because it mirrors his shirt. Um, I shot a series of three images. This was my favorite. I love the smile. And I'm often looking when I'm out shooting on location for bright, solid colors, and they make fantastic backdrops. Um, if you can collect several of them in one shoot, they make for really strong spreads in an album or composites on a canvas. Um, what I'm thinking about before I print this image is probably going to be looking around for the, that door and seeing how consistent the color is behind him. Um, he looks like he's in range. Everything's good. I've got lovely catch lights. Um, I love the skin tone. I'm just going to think, is are there um, just things that you would find when you're out and about, like a smudge or a dark mark or this or that. I've absolutely photographed children near graffiti walls, and it wasn't until I printed it large that I realized one of the words on the graffiti wall was really inappropriate. And I wish I'd paid a little more attention before I printed it. Um, things like that I watch out for. This was shot with the D4. Um, the 105-28 lens, um, ISO 500, 1 200th of a second, F3, and the matrix or evaluative metering. Um, before I keep going, does anybody have any questions? Let us know. Is this online and you know in line with what you want? This is the first time we've done this together, this webinar. We're going to be doing a lot of them, right? Like one every couple months, every other month. Um, so we want to make sure we're giving you what you're interested in and putting together the information that you want. Um, if you do have questions, this is the time to ask them. Uh, we have about 20 minutes left in the webinar, so we're going to hope to answer anything we can as we go along and at the end. Um, next, this is actually my little girl and uh, my youngest daughter. She's uh, seven years old at when this image is taken, not that long ago. And she is a complete contrast, I mean a study in contrast, in that she is a goofball and silly and will have a giggle fest, and then she'll have this side, which is more serious and soulful and sweet, but this isn't something I get right out of the gate on any shoot, whether it's my children or any other children. And if you've ever photographed your own children, they're actually the most difficult subjects to photograph, in my opinion. Um, but that's the thing I think about photographing people in general. There's usually never one side to them ever. So this side is all soul and focus and impact and it comes out here and there. It's this light and shadow, two sides, what you see and what you don't always see. This was shot with the Nikon D4, um, the 105-28 lens. This was shot in the, in the studio against a black backdrop with a really simple constant light setup. You can actually see the main light, that, that uh, soft box in her eyes. Um, there's a reflector underneath. If you notice, on her left eye, um, on her left eye, you can see the soft box. But on the right eye, there's still a hint of a catch light. And that's important to me to be able to show some of that. Um, and that is with the fill light underneath. Um, 
this, uh, when I'm printing this image, the biggest thing I'm going to think about is this is a black and white and it's got toning to it. And um, a lot of times when you have a black and white with a ton of shadow detail, you need to pay attention to things like um, any sort of toning getting um, kicked up a bit and knocked out of place. So um, a, a black and white image that has a sepia undertone, for instance, can come back with more yellow than you wanted. Uh, an image with really uh, warm tones can come back with more red or even pink than you want. So that's one of the things I'm going to think about is that an image, is this image set up with the saturation in mind to print and should I tone it down a little bit before I go? Um, okay, this is my budding beauty queen. I love this little girl. She came into the studio with her hair back and a low ponytail, glasses on, very reserved and quiet and had just gotten her braces taken off the day before. We started posing and twirling and turning up the music and suddenly this little girl appears like magic. Um, the more I was showing her images I was getting of her, of how fantastic she looks, her confidence soars even higher. Um, and that's when I shoot this image. This image is funny because the, the actual original image is, um, I had pulled back a little bit, I hadn't shot in so close, I cropped to this. But on the original image, her hair's flying all over the place because we're playing with the wind. Um, and it was just too crazy, so I had to zoom in a little bit more. Um, this, one, this image was shot with the, uh, when I say the constant lights, very specifically what I'm shooting with in the studio is the Westcott spider lights. Um, I'm shooting with a TD6. And um, I have uh, basically a softbox. I want to say it's something like a... I'm trying to think of the exact measurement of that softbox, somewhere around a 30 by 40 size. And um, it's, it's really close to her. I've got that hair light right behind her. You can see that hair light brightening up behind her. Um, that was a TD5 um, in a grid box, so a soft grid box, um, aimed again at her, at her back. I don't want the lights to spill over the shoulders. I want them touching the shoulders um, and brightening up the back of her hair. So that is how I have this image lit. Um, this is shot with a D4, um, one of my favorite portrait lenses ever, the 85-1.4 lens. Um, it's an ISO of 1000 because I have, I have lights going, but it's dark outside at this point. This is evening. Um, it's dark outside, so I have lights going, but I still need to kick up the ISO. It's at 1 400th of a second and an F50, and again, at the matrix or the evaluative metering. Um, the, uh, this is one of the images that's in our new version of the posing playbook that's coming out, the version 3, which should be out in like two weeks, I think, at this point. Um, just had a question. Would love to hear more about your studio light. Ha! I just did that. Real time. That's awesome. What I'm going to think about before I print this image is, um, as I'm looking at it like dead on before I'm going to go into printing, I'm going to look at the making sure, again, that her eyes are sharp. Um, the parts that I want in focus are in focus. Obviously, if they're not in focus, you can do some sharpening. If they are, are, are in focus and you don't want them in focus, you can do kind of a lens blur. I like to have my images um, perfect in that I like how they're lit. I like the contrast. I like all that sort of stuff. But imperfect that uh, if there's a shoe untied or there's a button loose or there's um, something that's just kind of a skew a little bit and it's not a big deal but it shows that this is a human being having a human experience being photographed. I keep that in. I love that sort of stuff. So I don't have any issue with that. Um, next, if you recall earlier the image of the black and white, this girl in profile in a squared off image you know, laughing with her braids flying around her face, um, I said to keep that in mind because I really love showing a variety of looks and expressions and post-processing styles. I think that has a huge impact on the overall look and feel of a collection of images. So I do like to mix it up. This image was, was shot, you know, seconds within the other one, literally within a minute. Um, and the only adjustments are which way she's facing, which way I'm composing the image, um, whether it's black and white or color. Um, there's a bit of a vintage feel on one and a bit of a modern feel on the other, but I think all that adds up to kind of a really cool collection of images. This was shot with the D800, the 10528. Um, it's an ISO of 200, shot at 1 200 of a second. The aperture on this is a 50. It seems like that background is quite blown out, but again, if distance the subject has a big impact. If you're distancing your subject from the background and you are distancing yourself from the subject, 
or even or closer or farther away, that's going to have a big impact on the depth of field. And this is center weighted for uh, metering. So, family. This is a lovely family image in their home. Um, if portraiture is all about capturing connection, then it's not just between you and your subject. It's also about the connection your subjects have with each other. It's one thing to pose a family together out in the park or in the studio, but when you get them like all together and and I, it's funny when I when I went out on um, Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and all that sort of stuff, and I announced this um, webinar. I was kind of laughing with Ashley about the fact that I keep saying get a pillow, <laughs> but I feel like when you can get like really comfortable and um, you're just in such a better place to take something in in terms of education or whatever the case may be, a conversation. Um, I think the th same things through with my subjects. If I can get them very comfortable, comfortable, and that's emotionally but also literally. Um, I tend to have a lot more of a natural feel, and that's what I love that's captured here. Um, so if you get them together and you get them snuggling up, either watching movies together at night or you pile them all up at each other or whatever the case may be, um, you get something that's, that's a little bit more intimate, more of a glimpse of who they are together than if it, it's a more formal look and feel. Um, on this image, it was just one gorgeous speed light lit the whole thing up for me. It's bounced against the ceiling, just one speed light. Um, this was shot with the D800, the 24-70-2.8 lens. Um, it was at ISO 1600, 1 125th of a second. And I'm at an F4 because I have a bit of a distance back. Um, again, I can, if I were closer to them, I would make sure that my uh, focus was more extended. And this was shot with evaluated or matrix metering. And I'm saying, when I say that, it's because I'm referencing um, different camera companies uh, have different terms for their metering options. So matrix or evaluating, evaluative means it's either on the Nikon or the Canon. Um, all right, before we go into the next one, I, would, I'm, I love the questions coming in. We're getting comments. Um, any other feedback that you have, any questions you have, just shout them out. We are going to do a Q&A right at the end. Hopefully we have time for that. Um, but uh, feel free to chime in with anything. We are loving that either on um, Twitter, at Tamara Lackey, or on the Google Plus page, on the Nation's Photo Lab page directly. Um, we'd love to hear that. And if it seems like I've said that three times, it's because I'm talking to a computer screen. I, I can't see you. But the notes we get are really helpful, so thank you. All right, so um, on this image, this was uh, shot in my studio. This is... I have a, a number of paper rolls that we shoot against, seamless paper, and we have um, four colors up at any time, and they are black, they are white, modern gray, and this indigo blue, or royal blue. Um, I think royal blue is the color name, but it looks a little bit more indigo-ish. And, um, and we also have a crimson red paper that we throw on a uh, backdrop roller, and those are the main ones that we tend to rotate through. That being said, they all look very different based on how we shoot them, based on how we set up the lighting. The modern gray could be gray or black. The royal blue could be royal blue, indigo, really deep purple, and even black. So um, depending on how we want to use this. This is shot against uh, the modern gray, but it looks more black. Um, in this image, we have, uh, well, this was shot, by the way, with the D4, the 35-1.4 lens. This is at ISO 250, 1 one thousandth of a second, and at F28, also the matrix metering. Um, when I'm looking at this image, um, what I'm thinking about is that uh, for the same thing I thought about when I mentioned earlier the image with a lot of background. I'm going to think about Bambi. Um, depending on how this is printed, it's funny, as I'm looking at this on a PC screen, I see more of a threat of banding than I did on the Mac screen. The Mac screen is calibrated, and it's what I'm going to get back from this lab, so I feel way more comfortable with that. But um, it kind of proves my point based on how things are printed. You really do want to make sure that somebody's looking at this and checking it before it just goes. Uh, that's a pretty big deal. So um, I'm going to look at banding. And the other thing I'm going to think about is what size is this image going to be? If this image is going to be... Um, if this image is going to be a 4x6 or a 5x7, um, even like an 8x10, I'm not too worried about all the hair going in her face. It's kind of cute, it's fun, um, it's playful. 
if this image is going to be a 30 by 40, something really big, every one of those little hairs is going to make a difference. It's going to stand out. Um, it's going to be pretty striking. So I'm going to care about that. Um, I'm going to care a great deal, and I'm going to start going in and either doing some work myself or I'm going to ask my lab to please do some special retouch to it. Um, but uh, one of the two things is going to happen if it's going to go very big because the little hairs that you don't care about small, you start to really care about big. It's one of the reasons I really love to print my work and, and why I advise people if you want to learn how you're doing and get a better idea of how you're doing, print your work big because you do not see it the same. Even on a large monitor, you do not see it the same as you do when it's standing in front of you, super big, and there's nowhere for anything to hide. It's just all there. Um, any little thing is there, and you really do see it. So that's one of the reasons why I love printing work. Uh, okay, let's see what's next. Um, okay, so uh, I think the, uh, the use of foreground is an excellent way to add context to an image. Uh, this photograph could have easily been shot straight on, but by dropping the angle of the lens and shooting with the arm tangibly, um, you know, that kind of in the, the moment, as it's in the moment feel, having the, the knee up and the little teddy bear, teddy bear all of that. Um, note, by the way, his feet, his legs. If you're shooting from a lower angle like I am here, I'm shooting far back and from a lower angle with the feet or the legs in front, you have to be cautious of perspective distortion. Uh, anything that's closer to a lens, especially if you're shooting, shooting really close to your subject, ends up looking huge in the frame. So because I'm shooting pretty close and because I'm shooting from a lower angle, I want to be conscious of that. And I have him tuck his feet pretty far back. If they were out or they were facing the camera, they would be gigormous. Um, I don't want that. So tucking the legs back or under or with kids, it's like crisscross applesauce. You either eliminate or you certainly minimize the issue. Um, here we've minimized the issue, and it's still cute and fun and fine. Um, but if it were, if it, if, like I said, if it, we weren't tucked all the way back, it would look different. This was shot in the family's living room. I pulled a chair from where it normally was arranged, and I found a section of open wall. It was lit by a bounce on-camera flash, and the silver side of a 42-inch reflector um, to the right of him is what provided that additional fill, and it gave me those catch lights, which I love. Um, you know, note again when I mention catch lights, it's really important when photographing children because it, it symbolizes so much about life and energy and raw emotion and expressiveness. And I don't want to flatten that out in any way by not lighting the eyes correctly. This was shot with the D800, the 84 lens at ISO 400, 1 100 of a second, F18, and matrix metering. And again, um, the speed light uh, shot and bounced off the off the top of the wall. Whew, I'm going to take a breather, ready? Um, we had um, a couple images come in. Um, so <laughs> I have a question from this very handsome man, Mr. Kramer. How do you make your clients laugh in photos? Do you have a go-to joke or subject matter? Um, I do not have any go-to jokes. I don't remember jokes very well. You ever have that experience where somebody asks you to tell a joke and you can't think of one joke, even though you've heard five thousand in your lifetime? Um, I don't tell them very. I don't remember them very well, and I don't tell them often. Mostly, I just kind of respond to what I see in front of me and what I see the person doing. Um, most children have way more comfortable of a self-deprecating nature than adults. They haven't learned to be entirely defensive yet, and if you you mock them in a really silly, fun way, they just think it's funny. They don't like hate you and want to, um, you know, burn down your house and attack you on Facebook. They just think it's funny. I think a lot of us adults can um, learn much from that, taking less offense. But um, I tease children um, in a really sweet, good-natured way, and I watch their reaction and the response because there are some children, some personality types that you don't want to tease. You're going to shut them down, or you're going to actually hurt their feelings. Um, so I, I play it, you know, according to how I'm reading the subject. I think that makes a huge difference. Okay, so um, on this next image, this is um, this was also photographed in uh, the Dominican Republic. This was also shot with the D800 and the um, 105-28 lens. This was really fun. If you look at her hands, she's got that that yellow paint on it on her hands. Um, we were actually painting walls and making shapes and um, using handprints, and it was a really cool experience. But um, one of the things that stands out to me about this print is that. If, you, if this image had been shot straight on, just a straight on composition, 
it would have been kind of dry. She's in the middle of the frame, and it's a little boring. By doing a simple camera tilt, um, what you get is you get those eyes now suddenly in the upper left-hand part of the frame, which is more naturally where you're drawn to, back to the idea of the, of the rule of thirds. Um, and suddenly the image has more impact. You tend to go to that place more naturally. Um, and the whole thing just has a different feel with just a slight amount of camera tilt. It's not even that big of a deal. Obviously, we've got a lovely triangular formation in terms of the composition, just the way she's holding her hands together. Um, it kind of looks like it's like namaste or peace. Or, but the truth is she was just kind of putting her hands back and forth together and feeling how the paint felt as she pulled her hands apart. So it looks kind of spiritual, but it was more like the silly, fun kid humor. Before I print this image, oh, before I print this image, um, what I'm going to think about is uh, two things. One, or again, we've got bright white in there, and I'm on a sunny day, so I always think about specular highlights. I know that if I send an image in and um, the highlights are blown on the image, when I get the print back, it's really obvious. There's a space where there's nothing there. It's this kind of break in the image uh, because there was there was nothing there. That's that's why when highlights are blown um, on a print, you really see it. Um, on uh, so that's one of the things I'm going to keep in mind too is that that white is um, treated appropriately. The other thing I'm going to think about is the color cast from her blue uh, little bow ties, the little ties in her hair. Um, there is a possibility of some cast in that upper left hand corner, and I'm going to pay attention to that before I print this image by correcting that um, before I get it back as a large file and I can't do anything about it. So that is something I'm going to pay a lot of attention to. Um, next, if you happen to see my um, Creative Live course this summer, uh, Posing Children, I did a whole uh, program. This little boy was a, a toddler on the roof that we should be photographed. And um, this was just a really playful experience while we were like smacking his hat around and being silly. And um, But I had a hard time keeping him in one spot. He wasn't a stayer. Uh, most people of this age are not stayers. They are goers. And um, so in order to keep them in one position, if you want to frame the shot a certain way, you have to kind of pull out the stops to do so. Um, this was a shot with a Nikon D4, the 35-1.4 lens, and there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in a second. Um, the ISO was 250, um, at 1 1,000th for shutter speed, and an F2.8 aperture. Um, matrix or evaluative metering. And that was an interesting choice, the matrix metering or evaluative, because behind him to the right, is a very bright white, uh, it's actually not white, it's part of the roof, but the way the sun was hitting it made it seem very bright. Um, and it could potentially be read as backlight, backlighting to the camera, which means that you want to switch to either a, you know, kind of more of a partial metering. Um, but uh, in this vein, because of the tilt and where uh, the angle of the camera was, I could still stay with evaluative metering and be okay. But it's something to think about because you get a very different shot based on your metering when you have different lighting that's either clearly backlit or not. Um, in this image, the, the reason I chose the 35-1.4 lens was because if I'd shot the same image with either a 24 or a 50, it wouldn't have had the same impact. The 35 kind of distorts a hint um, in a way that's really interesting to me. The, the 50 is basically what the human eye sees. It's the, it's the natural eye view, um, which I don't love. But the, um, the 35 has a little bit of a distortion to it, especially if you're shooting at a, at a wider angle and you're close. Um, and that makes it more interesting to me. We have him, um, from a composition perspective, on a diagonal, which actually is competing with this other diagonal going the other way behind him, which, again, I find to be visually interesting. Before I print this image, um, what I'm going to think about is, first and foremost, that brightness behind him. I have edited this image to manage that brightness because before I edited it, it that bright white back there was so bright that your eye goes to the point of most contrast. And where your eye goes to is that spot, not to the subject's face, not to his expression and his pose and um, all the spirit of him, which is what I want you to see first. And because of that, I need to tone down that bright, bright back there um, to not compete with where I want your eye to go. So I went ahead and toned that down, and that's the first thing I'm going to think about before I print, even when I just present digitally, but certainly when I print, um, I want that muted and I want that calmed down uh, so I don't have that competition point. One other thing I might think about right before I print is uh, looking at the flooring, little things that you don't care about um, on, a, on a digital print. 
you're going to really notice like you know there's a um, something fell on the floor or there's a like a hairband or a piece of garbage or schmutz or even like a, a water stain that's unsightly um, you're not going to care too much in a, in a print smaller but you're going to really see it big so things like that it, it's literally just a visual scan going through the image and thinking what's this going to look like in a much larger size and how do I correct for it now that's what I'm going to be thinking about um, oh, I love our family portrait. This is a really fun family portrait done. Uh, this is in our studio. This is the modern gray background. Um, uh, just a simple couch, a uh, little settee couch thing, kind of pile them on there. Um, I love this Im image because it's a quote-unquote formal family photograph, <laughs> but clearly uh, not so formal. Formal in that they wanted, they wanted the look where they all had kind of a cohesive clothing, which is typically something that I don't do or I don't advise. Um, but uh, but when the client wants it and it looks so cute, fine, that's good. Um, and we have them in the studio, and I'm trying to get them all in one place, and they're not going to stay, and they shouldn't stay because that doesn't even make sense. So the fact that some some of them are falling off the couch and some are twisting backwards, some are leaning in, that's kind of perfect because what I care about is that each of their expressions is natural and. There were no head swaps in this image. It's this is the the frame, um, and what I'm going for is interaction with all of them, but also them all close together as a family. This was shot with the D800, the 247028 lens, um, ISO 1250, one two hundred and fiftieth of a second, and a four five aperture. Um, also using uh, constant lights here, a main light, a fill light, and um, two hair or rim lights behind them skimming across the background and giving that nice separation from the background and the subjects, but also lighting up their hair and modeling the subjects, giving some more depth to the image. Um, the uh, What I'm going to think about before I print this, um, A is going to be banding. Again, it's one of the things I see kill a lot of images. It's a beautiful image. Everything's great. And then there's like this splotchiness or this banding. I'm going to think about that first and foremost. Um, the second is going to be the fact that there's these bright whites. I have to make sure that the highlights are held. Um, but you also have some little dark spots like in the jeans and things like that. Um, I don't want my shadow detail loss. When this print goes large, I want to be able to see all aspects of it. I don't want it to be a big clump. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling out some shadows if they're not, you know, if they're not in there already after processing um, and things like that. That's what I'm going to think about before this goes to printing. Okay. Woo! Um, we have uh, a few minutes left for some questions, and we have a few. Um, I am going to answer them. Again, if you have questions and you haven't asked them yet, either ask them um, on Twitter, at Tamara Lackey. Just, just send that right to me on Twitter, um, or directly on the Google uh, Plus page, uh, on the comment section, um, somewhere we can make sure we see them. We know we'll see those two spots. We can't look everywhere. We know we'll see those two spots. Um, so please ask your questions in the next few minutes if you have them. Um, one of the questions I just a got asked. Um, I love the image you showed just now. The color image of the same girl you showed in black and white earlier on. Okay, so this came in earlier. Sorry. <laughs> in profile. Do you usually know in advance from the client the exact size you are going to print the image in? Okay, so the question is, do I know um, the exact, and this is from uh, Latina Zenova. Um, do I know the exact size that I'm going to print the image in? Rarely, very rarely. Certainly I do talk to the clients ahead of time. Um, we do discuss things like um, what they have in mind for these images. But again, I, everybody does it differently, but when I meet with a client ahead of time, what I'm most interested in is building rapport with them. And, getting a really good feel for who I'm going to be photographing and, and what I'm going to be walking into um, and their intentions as it relates to um, what they most hope to get out of this. But rarely do I discuss the exact print that everything's going to be. I know other photographers will pre-sale a session. I don't do that. I like afterwards going through every image one by one and doing kind of a la carte deal um, and putting it all together into this package that's very custom for them. Um, so, so no. What I will know, however, is when a client starts out by saying, "We have got to replace the image over the fireplace," or you know, "We love albums. We definitely want to do something like an album." Um, we know we want to get some prints to people by the holidays. We used to usually love to give eight by tens or eleven by fourteen, something like that. Um, that I will know. 
um, and then I will I will uh, make sure I shoot for something if I have something in mind. But otherwise, I do not. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, oh my gosh, 7:53. We need to wrap this up. Um, did you guys have anything you wanted to add other than the promo code? Okay, so we have, um, for those of you who stuck, stuck with us the whole time, and I mean including last time and this time, we have two promo codes for you as a way of thanking you. Um, if you have never done any printing with Nations Photo Lab, A, you should. They're very good, and I'm not just saying that because I'm here and they'll kick me out if I don't. Um, I have a fantastic promo code for you. It's TL. Fall, so that's T as in Tamara, L as in Lackey, fall as in the season, um, TL Fall, and you can use that to get $50 off your very first order, like anything you order, and you can use that all the way up to the end of this month, um, the end of this month being November, October, November 1, up till November 1st, um, so TL Fall is the code, um, use that, and feel free to share it with um, friends or uh, people that you like. Um, the other, if you have worked with Nations Photo before and you want to order more, um, I have another code that you will love. It is TL Print Love, <laughs> uh, but it's spelled a little funky. So it's T as in Tamara, L as in Lackey, print, like a print, and love is L-U-V. So TL Print L-U-V all together. And that is for 40% off any prints that you order. Um, and you can use that with other codes or other sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it multiple times. It's multi-use, and you can use it with sales going on, which is awesome. Like, so basically, you can order like forty by eight hundreds <laughs> for like eighty cents. <laughs> well, not exactly, but the point is, um, some of these discounts are to get you in and get you using um, the service to see why you want to keep it. Um, you can use that all the way up till November first. If you have any follow-up questions for me or Nations Photo, feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, it was lovely talking at you. I miss you. I'm sorry I can't see you. Um, I'm going to jump out and have um, Ashley and Harvest say goodbye. Uh, let's see. How do we pull this back to this crazy PC world? Seriously, it blows my mind. Go all the way there. there we are. Are. Okay. Thank you guys very much. We're back. You guys. <laughs> Thank you. Guys Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank Take you care. for joining us. And we'll talk to you guys next time. <laughs>